In this video, I'm going to go over five very important tips for combat in this lovely new CRPG that we've been blessed with, Celasta Crown of the Magister. Now, some of these tips you might already be familiar with as this video is a bit more beginners oriented, but you might pick up on one or two, so make sure to stick around. All five of these I try to do in every single combat encounter, and they really do make a huge difference. And in Celasta, even on the normal difficulty, the game can be quite challenging as long as you didn't go into the game settings and make it impossible to die. So this video will hopefully help a lot of you guys out that are just getting started in this game. If you guys end up enjoying this video, please subscribe. Much more Celasta content on the way and links to my Twitter and my Discord server will be below. Let's get right into it. The first tip I'm going to go over, and perhaps the most important, is being prepared. So combat preparation. Now preparation might seem like it's common sense, but actually sometimes it requires repetition and even knowledge to truly develop those solid pre-combat habits that you should be getting your characters into. And these can really make a big difference. And the first thing I'm going to talk about in this preparation category is party buffs. So there's two types of spells. I'm gonna narrow it down to two types. You have longer duration spells and then shorter duration spells and or abilities. So the longer duration spells are going to last hours of in-game time. So hours of actual time of your characters running around when you're not in turn-based combat mode. These spells will typically last until you take a short or long rest and then they'll go away and you have to reapply them. So these types of spells you want to apply after your long rest is over immediately before you set off exploring because if you get caught off guard and you're in a combat situation you're going to have to waste that first round of combat applying these buffs to you or your party members and that can actually be devastating especially if an enemy surprises your team and you've already missed out on that first round of combat and one of the most common examples of these longer duration party buffs would be the mages or the wizards mage armor so mage armor for a wizard is going to boost a wizard's armor class up to 13 plus their dexterity modifier and Wizards typically don't have armor, so this is kind of a big deal. With mage armor, you want to apply this the instant that you come out of a long rest or right when you land in your destination, apply it right away. And we can take a quick look at it. I already have it on my wizard right now because of this save point, but I'll apply it one more time. So every time right after I come out of a long rest, as long as I can remember, I'm trying to develop that habit myself. I apply mage armor and then for the rest of the day until I take a long rest, my wizard's armor class is boosted. I don't have to waste that first round of combat buffing or giving my wizard the armor class boost. Now I can use it for magic missile or to take down a stalactite off the ceiling and wipe out the enemies. This is a huge help. You got to make sure that you cast these before combat begins. Now another quick example would be my cleric's aid spell and this basically applies temporary hit points to up to three party members and I also am going to do this before I get into a combat situation. So right after I finish a long rest instead of having to waste a round in combat I'll applying aid now there's going to be other spells and other abilities that have these longer durations so make sure to look at your spells and abilities as you level up and see what the duration is on them now the shorter duration spells you actually might be able to get some of them off right before combat begins as well but you shouldn't be casting them right after a long rest you should be casting them when you know that you're coming up to enemies and you're ready to engage into combat an example of this might be shield of faith with my oh i gotta switch to uh, one-handed sword shield of faith with my paladin and this will boost my AC or a party member's AC by two and it lasts for 10 minutes as it's going to tell us here on our character So a 10 minute duration is 10 minutes of real time in game or 10 turns in combat So if I cast shield of faith right before I enter a combat or right before I engage into combat um, I'll have it for probably at least eight or nine rounds if I cast it right when I come out of a long rest That 10 minutes might go away and I wasted that spell slot So some of these spells you're going to be able to cast right before combat combat begins. Like I said, make sure to understand your abilities and spells as you get them. 
And also along the lines of combat preparation is your inventory and making sure that each of your characters has the items that they need in their inventory before combat begins. And one example might be potions. If you can take a look at my paladin, I don't have any potions. Oh, I do have one. Let's pretend that that's not there. I don't have any good potions on my paladin. My ranger is hoarding them all. So before combat begins, you want to make sure that you have, uh, let's go ahead and split this to one. You want to make sure that each of your characters has the items on them that they need and they're equipped in the right slot because in Celeste, so you only get one inventory action per turn and along the same lines um, as the potions let's take a look at my ranger right now my ranger only has five arrows equipped and my paladin's been the one that's doing the looting my paladin has it looks like almost 60 arrows in his inventory if i start combat without the arrows in my ranger's inventory i'm not going to be able to give them to my ranger so it's important that i make sure to look at all this stuff before combat begins and transfer all these arrows over to my ranger and then also make sure that we equip these arrows in in the first and second slot so this is actually really important i found myself getting in many uh troubling situations simply because i didn't manage my inventory before combat began and also one more quick thing you can also look at your party's encumbrance and make sure that each party member has the right encumbrance that you want for example my ranger right now has light encumbrance which means his speed is reduced by two well my ranger is such an agile class based on maneuverability and he needs to move a lot to get away from enemies to shoot his bow so i actually might want to take something that's heavy like these rations and give them to my paladin and now my ranger is in the nun encumbrance and he can move his full uh, distance or speed as we call it in DD &D, in combat so make sure to take a look at all this stuff in your inventory and also make sure to apply those pre-combat buffs before you get into combat on to tip number two and this one's going to be a little bit more interesting than the combat preparation and also much quicker. So if you have any characters in your party that are proficient with shields, which is three of my parties, you really might want to consider having a one-handed weapon and a shield as one of your possible weapon combinations. So in Celasta, you can change your weapon once per turn. And as you can see with my ranger, I have the torch set up, I have my bow, and then I also have my one-handed rapier and also a shield. So if I take a shot with a bow at an enemy, um, I can then switch over to the sword and shield right after I take that shot as my one weapon change per turn. And why would you do this? Well, shields and Celeste to give you a plus two to armor class if you have them actually equipped. So if I take a shot with my bow and then I switch back to my sword and shield, I now have a plus two. So when the enemy comes at me, it's gonna be harder for them to hit me. If I decide not to switch to that sword and shield, I'm only gonna have my regular armor class and the enemy's gonna have an easier time hitting me. So after I take a shot with my ranger right here, I'm actually going to, even at this distance, I'm going to go ahead and use my one weapon change per turn and switch right over to my sword and shield. Now, obviously, next round, I'll have to switch back to my bow, and then I can't switch back to the sword and shield for that round, but the round after that, I'll be able to go back to my sword and shield. And this is also going to work really well for my paladin, which is coming up in the order of turns. So right now it's my paladin's turn and I'm gonna take a swing with my two-handed weapon because that's my paladin. He's super powerful and I want max damage. So let's go ahead and swing at this ghoul right here. Yeah, we'll cast divine smite. And now that my action is over, I'm going to go ahead and switch to my sword and shield. So I'm not going to be using my sword and shield, as you guys can see. But when the enemies attack me now, I have that plus two to armor class. And then when it's my next turn with my paladin, I'll switch back to my two-handed sword. So do this with as many characters as you can. Like I said, I even do it with my ranger. My ranger is more bow-focused. Instead of dual wielding, I do the one-handed sword and shield to give him a little bit of buff to AC if he's in any vulnerable situations. Do this as much as you can. I know a lot of people don't do this, but make that weapon switch. Take advantage of that shield and survive much longer. On to tip number three. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do three and four together so we can speed this along a little bit. So tip number three is going to be surprise your enemies as much as you can. And the way that you go about doing this is by attacking an enemy without them being aware of your presence. And by doing so, the entire enemy team will be skipped for their first round of combat, meaning your entire party gets to use their actions. It will skip the enemy and then go back to round two. This can really help you start a combat encounter in the way that you 
want to start it. And in Solasta, you can get really unlucky. So this can be a really important thing to do and give you that advantage at the start of each combat encounter. So to go ahead and surprise your enemies, you're going to want to move around in this game most of the time in cautious mode, especially if you're in kind of a suspect area. This makes it much harder for the enemy to spot you. And if you spot the enemy, just be careful and set up your party and then take a shot. And you'll notice we're going to do it right now. The entire enemy team has been surprised. It tells you in the top right. Uh, the initiative orders have been rolled, but it's going to skip all of the Soar Akath for the first round of combat. So when I end my Ranger's turn, you can see it goes to him, then it skips and goes right over to my Wizard. And this brings us into tip number four, which is use cover to your advantage. So with my Wizard right here, um, I'm going to pretend that this isn't, this isn't even here right now. Let's pretend my Wizard was right here. I can take her out of cautious mode because they are aware of our presence right now. Let's say I take a shot at this Soar Akath down here with Magic Missile. After my shot is complete, I'm going to want to not leave her standing here in the open. And I know it sounds like common sense, but this is something that you should also develop the habit of doing. So after I take my shot with the magic missile, I'm going to examine the environment a little bit and look at the grid and see where I'm able to move. And it looks like I can't actually get back here behind this pillar, but I can bring her right over here, which is going to give me... Um, some cover from their line of sight when it's actually their turn in round number two. So you're going to want to do this um, every single time, especially with ranged combatants, if you possibly can. Um, there's also something to note too, is that if you're standing behind cover that's covering about half of your character's body, that's going to give the enemy a minus two penalty to their attack. And you can see right now that all three of my characters are behind a half cover right now. If any of the enemies take a ranged attack, they're going to have a minus two. Now, if there was cover that was bigger than this, and it was taking up about three quarters of my character's bodies, I guess th this doesn't work when you have a dwarf and a human but if it was taken out three quarters of my human's body um the enemy is going to get a minus five penalty to their attack making it even better and cover like this you can actually shoot behind so when it comes back to my ranger's turn i can just stay right behind this they're going to have a minus two penalty to attack but i can shoot at them with no penalty at all so now it's my paladin's turn and I don't have anything ranged with him right now. So I'm going to want to send him front line, but instead of just running right down the staircase, the furthest I can go is right here. We might as well use this statue to our advantage and bring him down behind the statue, decreasing the chance of them having line of sight on him. So he's not going to take that ranged damage. And now we're back to my ranger for the start of round two. Let's pretend that this little rallying cover isn't here, but the pillars are. So on his turn, I would what I would do is just step out from the pillar. I would take a shot at one of these guys. And then after he takes his shot, instead of standing there, we're going to go right back behind the pillar. This really will make a difference, just like surprising your enemy. Um, just get into the habit of popping out, shooting, and then popping back behind cover. And when you can stand behind cover like half cover, you might as well make use of it. And now on to our final tip, tip number five. And we're back in the dark castle with the zombies. And this tip, I'm sure most people have been told for many games that involve um, parties of people attacking something. And this is focus fire. So I can't stress enough how much of a difference it truly makes in Solasta to choose one enemy no matter how big or small, and have your entire party attack that one enemy, at least three party members, sometimes all four. If you don't need all four, that's even better. But choosing one enemy and going all out on that enemy is going to make a huge difference, and then you move on to the next one. And you might not notice a huge difference in the combat encounter in the beginning, but over the course of the fight, um, it's going to really reduce the incoming damage that comes to your party. If everybody attacks a different target, um, those enemies, you're always going to have the maximum amount of enemies attacking your entire party if you focus fire you ensure that you at least get one down and slowly over the course of the combat encounter less damage is incoming to your party so in this zombie encounter right here i'm going to come over here i didn't really plan what i'm going to do but i'll just do a magic missile with my battle cleric on this zombie we'll see what happens to his health He's about halfway so now when it comes my mage's turn or my wizard's turn i keep saying mage in this game um, so we have a zombie that moved into the room that has full health, but instead of, oh man, see this put me in a tough situation because I'm actually going to get an opportunity attack. If this zombie didn't move in my face, we're going to try it anyways. Oh no, we're good actually. Okay, we're good. So instead of attacking this zombie that came in my face, I'm actually going to do another magic missile with my wizard on the one that we already have halfway down. 
it can be tempting but it's really important now that zombie's dead the fight it just the it, the reduction in incoming damage is already becoming significant and now since this zombie got in my face i'm gonna have my entire party focus on this one really makes a huge different difference focus fire when you're in like a boss battle choose if you want to focus the boss down first or if you want to focus the ads at least have i would say three party members on one enemy to ensure that it dies and that's it for the combat tips tonight guys hopefully you enjoyed all five of these and i hope some of you guys picked up one or two let me know below in the comments and of course share some of your knowledge in the future i'll do some more advanced combat guides but i want to get all the beginners videos out of the way if you guys missed my previous celasta videos make sure to check them out on this channel i did a review character creation guide i went over all the races and classes and much more to come i love supporting this game very excited for the future of crpgs see you guys on the next one